how can you improve your product photography to create images like this, this, and this? and actually make them eye-catching and scroll-stopping. So I am getting a lot more DMs at the moment with people asking me to give feedback on their photos and unless you're a student inside my course Become a Brand Photographer, it's really hard for me to get to everybody so I wanted to make this video and walk you guys through my six top tips on creating better product photography. And don't forget if you are a student inside my course Become a Brand Photographer, you can post all your photos inside the Facebook group for feedback from both myself and other photographers. You can ask any questions that you need so I will leave a link in the description box below if you guys are interested in that and you haven't joined and use the code YouTube for 10% off and if you're a brand watching this video I cannot emphasize the importance of having high quality visuals on both your website and your social media channels and the reason for this being is mainly because there's so much saturation out there now in the market whatever industry you're in and if your competitor has better visuals in you for both photo and video, their graphics, their website looks better, they're most likely gonna get the sale over you. Now, if you're new here, I'm Amanda and I'm a brand photographer based in Brisbane, Australia. And essentially I work with skincare, beauty, health, wellness, and lifestyle brands to help bring their photo and video content to life. So if you wanna go and check me out and get to know me more, you can do so at Amanda Campianu over on Instagram. And if you wanna watch more tutorials on product photography, learn more tips and tricks, then head on over to my YouTube channel. I've got quite a few videos on there. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love to see you in the community, but let's get stuck into the video. So I think the most important thing that is gonna help you level up your product photography is good lighting. So the one thing that I often see when people send me photos and they want feedback is that they just don't have enough light on the scene or the product isn't lit well enough. And basically there are two light sources that you can use, the sun, or artificial light and if you've watched my intro to studio lighting which i'll link in the description below you guys know how i feel about studio lighting i love it i can't live without it um, i don't really shoot in natural sunlight unless i'm out on location and it is a model shoot um, but lighting is your first thing that you have to pay attention to and so if you're using natural sunlight ideally you probably want to be outside or near a window but also have a think about whether you want diffuse light, so in like nice soft shadows, or if you want something that is a little bit more harsh, then I would shoot in direct sunlight. Otherwise, artificial light is an absolute game changer. And there are so many affordable and budget-friendly options out there when it comes to investing in studio lighting. And I don't have to worry about the time of day or how shitty the weather is outside. I can just turn my lights on and start shooting and get really good lights. Now, if you are new to studio lighting, I do have a tutorial as well on five lighting techniques that I use. So I'll link that in the description box below if that sounds of interest. Now, the other thing too, when it comes to lighting is ensuring that your products are well lit and the light contours them really nicely. So this photo here is the original photo that I took and you can't actually see the whole label properly. And this is an issue. So what I had to do was put a white foam board under the product to reflect back into the writing on the label. And so this makes for a higher quality photograph now that you can actually see what the label is and what the brand is. And mind you, I had to do quite a bit of Photoshop work on these photos to ensure that each letter of the word Three Warriors was actually showing on the label. And products are made of different materials, like reflective products are harder to work with. It requires a little bit more of a complex lighting setup, um, even a matte kind of material. So you've really got to pay attention to these little things and how to correctly light different types of products. Okay, number two is that your props don't make sense or they make your photo look messy, which is something that we do not want. So when you are prop styling, you want every single prop to be placed intentionally in the scene. You want them to be well thought out. Sometimes I see photos where it's like, that prop doesn't really make sense for that product or for that brand and it just looks really random. So the way that you wanna go about your styling is start as minimal as possible. Start with one or two props and then build up from there 
if you feel like you need to. And it really helps to understand a brand's personality and their overall product, you know, are they a cheeky brand? Are they sassy? Are they more moody? Are they calm? Are they peaceful? You know, what kind of aesthetic are they trying to reflect in their overall brand identity? And who are they trying to market to? Are they trying to market to young teenagers who like to go out and party or something? Or are they trying to attract mums or people who are you know working full-time in a corporate job whatever it is it's really important that us as photographers we understand the brand and what they stand for and who they are trying to market to and this is why it is so important to have your clients fill out a creative brief because without that brief we cannot begin to understand the brand and their identity. And don't just include a prop for the sake of it either. Some products don't even need any props. For example, this photo here I did for my clients, no props, literally just her packaging and multiple tubs of it because her packaging stands on its own. It's an incredible brand and the product is amazing. And I mean, I'm obsessed with the packaging, it's beautiful. Now, my third tip to creating better product photography is to pay attention to your backgrounds because these play a really important role in helping your products stand out. Not to mention, utilizing color and different patterns are a great way to create eye-catching visuals. So to start with, you wanna map out the key colors of the brand, and I wouldn't really go more than three colors because this will really help you create a nice, cohesive gallery of images if you can stick to two or three colors. And when I start with backgrounds, I always start with a plain color before I go patterned. So if a brand comes to me and their colors are like pink and white, I'm gonna start shooting on either a pink background or white background or I'm gonna mix both together. Then I might wanna get a little bit more creative with some pattern backgrounds. I love using the Everyday Co. This pink tile background is like my absolute favorite at the moment. I'm obsessed with it. It's bright, it's bold, it's fun, and I love it. But she has so many different patterns in the store and it's a really great way to add a little bit more interest to your photo gallery. So when you're starting out, just use your plain background colors to start with and it creates more negative space in a photo as well. And I just think it keeps it really nice and clean and then start branching out into your pattern backdrops. All right, my fourth tip when it comes to creating high quality product photography is to pay attention to your composition of the scene and also your angles. So there are two things that I want to address in this section. And the first one is the horizon of your image. So the horizon essentially is where like your scene is on your backdrop. Like this, you can see a nice clean horizon on this image here. Now, often what can happen is this horizon is not straight. And so you can see in this photo here, this is before I retouched it in Photoshop, the horizon is a little wonky and that's not what we want. We want nice clean lines. So you can either fix this in production while you're shooting or you can easily fix this in post-production as well in Photoshop. So when it comes to your horizons, just make sure they're nice and clean, they're straight no matter which way they're going. You might have it on a little bit of an angle, but just make sure it's straight. And if you're using pattern backdrops, especially a tile backdrop, please ensure that your tile is straight because even if it's a little bit off and it's wonky, people are gonna notice and it just doesn't look realistic. Now, the second thing to pay attention to are the lines of your product. And so this photo here, you'll notice that the product, it's a little bit wonky, it's a little bit off center. So we need to fix that. We just need to straighten it up a little bit before we give that to a client. And another little tip is to pay attention to your rule of thirds and place your product on the intersecting third. So what this does is it actually naturally draws the focus and attention to the product itself, as opposed to if the product was in smack bang center of the scene. Okay guys, this next one is really, really important and it is the final piece of the puzzles where the magic happens to create really good product photography. And that is editing your photos. So my editing process starts in Lightroom where I do a basic color grade on my photo and then I will take it into Photoshop and continue to edit and retouch in there. And I can't emphasize enough the importance of learning Photoshop for your product photography because it will change the game for you, I promise. And I know that learning Photoshop, it can be really daunting when you're just starting out. That is why I neglected to use it for an entire year. 
but when I started using it, that's when the quality of my images drastically increased. So if you wanna start learning Photoshop, learn your basic tools first and really understand what they do. This will help you do more advanced retouching techniques when you know the ins and outs of each tool in Photoshop. But if you're a student inside my course, become a brand photographer, there are Photoshop tutorials on retouching in there that show you exactly how to do specific retouching techniques for product photography so that you don't have to spend hours on YouTube searching for one specific thing only to come up with really nothing because that's what used to happen to me. One of my favorite things to do right now is to add little graphics to my photos like this is such a fun element to add to your photo. It can really add a lot of interest and personality to the image. And so things like this can really only be done inside of Photoshop. So by using Photoshop, you are opening up a whole new world of creative possibilities. Okay, so my last tip to creating high quality product photography it's not a practical tip, but it's one that I think is really, really important. And that is to not rush your process and to take breaks. So there are days that I just cannot bring myself to shoot because I'm physically tired. I'm just not inspired creatively. I might be having an off day um, and I just need a break because if you're shooting seven days a week, which is what I was doing, crazy person, um, too much of that can actually impede on your creativity and you burn out. And so eventually it feels like you're just trying to force creativity out of your ass and just producing work that you know is not your best work because you haven't had time to actually be inspired by something. And so this is why I like to schedule my studio shoots at the beginning of the week, usually from Monday to Wednesday, because at the end of the week, especially come Friday, I do not wanna do anything, I do not wanna talk to anyone, and I just wanna have like a day to myself. And so I'll usually take my Thursday and Fridays to edit the galleries that I have shot at the beginning of the week, but also to just create content for myself. So make Make sure that when your energy is high, you take advantage of that. And if your energy is low, listen to your body, listen to your creative mind. And if you're not feeling something, don't force it out of you. And this is often why I don't commit to seven day turnaround times with clients because it's simply not enough time for me to get to know your brand, to understand your product, to plan your shoot from prop sourcing to backgrounds to creative concepts to actually doing the shoot and then pre and then post-production. Like that's a lot of work to try and get done in a week amongst all the other things that we have to do as business owners. And so my turnaround time is usually from 14 to 30 days because that is what is going to allow me to create the best possible work for my clients. And this is also why I try and encourage clients to think ahead when it comes to their content. And it can also take a while to come up with a creative vision for a shoot as well. So I'm about to show you guys a video that has been one of our best received product videos this year. And I don't know how many times I've watched it, but I am obsessed with this video. So let's take a look. So this has been one of the best product videos that we've done in our studio and it took some time for us to put this together. So I'm so grateful to our client that they gave us complete creative direction 
but they also gave us creative space to produce this video for them. So those are my six top tips on creating high quality product photography. And if you can really hone in on each of those elements and practice them, experiment with them, then you will be seeing a difference in your product photography. Now, as usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy to answer and chat with you guys. If you wanna see more behind the scenes tips and tricks, or you wanna to get to know me more, go and head on over to my Instagram, Amanda Campiano, or head on over to my YouTube channel and watch some of my other videos there on product photography. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video the thumbs up if you found it helpful, and I will see you in the next video.